Good evening, good evening, good evening, everyone. And welcome to our Tuesday evening Let's Talk Health program. Can you raise your volume, please, Brother Sharp? My volume is all the way up. Huh? Can you hear me now? Go ahead. Okay, can you hear me now? Go ahead, my brother, we can hear you. Good evening, everyone, and uh, welcome to our Tuesday evening Let's Talk Health program. It gives me um, immense pleasure to welcome you all to another evening of excellence at our Tuesday evening Let's Talk Health program. We are truly honored and delighted to have every one of you joining us here tonight. Whether you are a regular attendee, an occasional visitor, or a newcomer, we welcome you this evening. When we look around us, um, we see that disease is on a rise. And God, it is not God's will that we become sick. And God said in his word to us that he, wish, he wishes above all things that we prosper and be in health, even as our soul prospers. And God also said that his people perish for lack of knowledge. But I am so thankful that God is not willing that any of us should perish. And he is not willing that we should remain in ignorance. And therefore, he has raised up Live to Health Ministry, among many others, to be a lighthouse to those who are in darkness. And my prayer is that um, we will not keep this information to ourselves, but we will share it with those who are ignorant so that they too can become a blessing to someone else. So welcome again, welcome one, and welcome all. Please bow with me as we pray. Almighty and loving Father, I just wanna thank you for this opportunity where we could come yet another Tuesday evening, oh Father. We are so grateful for these messages, almighty and loving God. You said in your word that it is not your desire that we perish. And the Heavenly Father, indeed your people perish for lack of knowledge. But we are grateful, O oh Father, that you are sending, O oh Father, these messages to us. I pray, O oh Father, that we will use these messages to make the right decisions. So I pray that you would open our minds. I pray that you would be with the presenter for this evening. And that as he speaks to us, O oh Father, that our hearts, O oh Father, give us receptive hearts to receive this information this evening. So bless tonight's proceeding, O oh Lord, for this I ask and pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Our presenter for this evening is Brother Ricardo Bob, and he is no stranger to us. He is a public health professional, Christian scientist, medical missionary, and president of the Caribbean Medical Missionary Association. And you know, there are so much more that are added to his name, even too numerous to mention. And he's a very humble man of God. And with his, in spite of his busy schedule, 
He always makes himself available and take time out to share these life-changing presentations with us. So let's get ready to learn so that we may be equipped to help others. But before he speaks to us this evening, we will first listen to the theme song. Theme song coming up, just give me a moment. Disease, disease, disease. What is disease? Disease is an effort of nature to free the system from conditions that result from a violation of the laws of health. In case of sickness, there are four steps that should be taken. Step number one, the cause should be ascertained. Step number two, unhelpful conditions should be changed. Step number three, wrong habits should be corrected. And step number four, nature is to be assisted in her effort to expel impurities and to reestablish right conditions in the system. So the next voice you will hear is that the voice of Brother Ricardo Bob. Over to you, my brother. Yes, good evening, everyone, and thank you for that introduction, Brother Shad. Uh, it's good to be with Leap to Health again. And um, we just want to say thank God for ministries like this who continue to bring information so that people can have, you know, stuff to make choices. It's really good to be here, and I just want to say a good evening to us. We're looking at a, a topic this evening that uh, is, you know, interesting. It's a topic that captivated the world for a few years, but it's not actually gone because we're hearing about resurgence. Resurgence. And one of the things that we need to be mindful of is that we, as people who are supposed to know, we don't create situations of fear and panic. So this evening, we want to look at Another look at um, coronavirus, COVID. We have been hearing about it for a long time. Our lives have been changed permanently because of the COVID pandemic. And one of the things we run the risk of is becoming complacent. 
because we have every situation is an opportunity for us to grow and for us to learn. So this evening, as we share some reminders, we hope to learn a few things from the experience so that we can have a better platform to grow in grace and in the knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So let's bow our heads as we pray. Father in heaven, it is such a privilege to share one more time with your people. We pray for clarity of thought. We pray for the Holy Spirit. Help us to know that we live in a world where there is so much to distract us, but help us to stay focused. And may we uh, take the time to understand the issue in the controversies that we face in the universe. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Uh, for just a little over two years, between 2020, 2022, the world was plunged into a pandemic. When I went to college, I wouldn't tell you what year, we studied about pandemics. We studied about the flu pandemic, the plague pandemic, and so on. But we never physically worked in a pandemic. And then here we were in our lifetime being plunged into a pandemic where every aspect of our lives was changed. Our school was changed, work was changed, even our worship was changed. The entire economy was affected. People's lives were affected in terms of their liberties and freedom. So what was the issue? What were the challenges? How do we learn from this and come out better? We need to put things into perspective. And the, one of the best ways to put a thing into perspective is to allow yourself to step outside of it and to look in. Most people have a problem in terms of how they would do that. Now, as I said, we would have studied about um, pandemics before in, in theory, and we studied about epidemic. Of course, pandemic is a worldwide phenomenon, and epidemic is when you have um, unusually high numbers, and then you have endemic, which is the continuous presence of something. But things like cholera, when, when, when there was the earthquake in Haiti, there was cholera. And there are things that we we'll learn from that experience. One is that you can never have enough medical supplies. So you better know about plants. Um, things like your scarlet fever, your tuberculosis. Um, in the 1900s, you know, the leading cause of death was things like influenza and pneumonia. And the thing is that improved sanitation played a very important role in getting these situations under control. God would have given his people in this world, when he brought the Israelites out of Egypt, he gave them some important sanitation rules. And this was one of the things that was to be important in the reduction and or elimination of disease. A lot of stuff is prevented by uh, hygiene. Let's think about it. Go back to the definition of disease. If there is a definition of disease that the world has, and there's a definition of disease that God gives. So when we talk about disease in the world, we are talking here about conditions or symptoms that result from something. Um, that's what is called disease. So a person may have diabetes, high blood pressure. These are non-communicable, but they may have influenza. They may have cholera. They may have food poisoning. Those are um, highly contagious diseases. The thing is that the, this, what we look at as disease is really the body trying to heal itself. And that's why Ministry of Healing 127 is important to put into perspective. Remember, we're putting it into perspective. The fact that disease is really an effort, is nature, effort of nature, and we'll see how that works. Uh, the effort of nature to free the system from conditions that result from a violation of the laws of health because God has given us what we need. He has given us what we need, and we will examine some of that as we go through the presentation. So I know most of us, if not all of us, would remember um, H5N1, avian flu, HIV. In our lifetime, these things were going around, and they were thought to be epidemics, not necessarily pandemic, as in the COVID situation. Um, MERS and SARS and even Ebola. And people were being prepared, but the great thing that was happening in people's minds, people were afraid. Remember, God is love. 
And in First Timothy, he says, there is no fear in love. God tells us already that wherever love is, there is no fear. Perfect love casteth out all fear. He has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. So why are we fearing? Where does fear come from? Well, the root of fear is believing things that are not true. When Adam and Eve chose another God, when they chose to listen to Lucifer, they chose another God. And the natural result is that they were ashamed, they hid themselves, they ran away. So the natural result of believing that which is not true is fear. Many people don't understand fear. Fear is, I am now going to look out for me. I am not going to think about the relationship, the value of the relationship between me and my God, me and my fellow human beings is going to change. The truth is that there are two antagonistic principles in the world. There's the kingdom of God and the kingdom of Satan. The kingdom of God is based on love, Satan, fear, and selfishness. Fear is driven by false. Selfishness is lack of truth, lack of love. Uh, we have truth. We have lies. We have evidence. God is going to give evidence. That's why he created the world and all there is in them. You know, Genesis 2, 1 says, thus the heavens and the earth were finished and all the host of them. And God ended his work on the seventh day. Why did he do that? Well, because he was given evidence that on the seventh day, we need to look at. God is going to give evidence for the first six days. Adam was not there. He did not see. He would need help so that God gave him the power to reason so that he can consider the evidence on the seventh day and make his own conclusion. Also, not just him, but the unlooking universe as to the character of God, because there was a problem in the universe about the character of God. Now, Satan's kingdom used proclamations and claims because there is no evidence. So it's going to say thing until you have to believe it. God's kingdom is based on design law. That's how reality works. We're talking here about the laws, the hydrological cycle. We're talking about the laws that govern motion. The fact that if you don't put energy into a system, then it's going to deteriorate. The laws of thermodynamics, the laws of motion. Um, the kingdom of Satan is based on imposed law, which is rules made up to control people. Of course, God's kingdom is based on freedom, liberty, very big thing. But the enemy's kingdom is based on coercion and force. So when you look at the COVID pandemic, you may see which kingdom is at work and come to your own conclusion. Is it the kingdom of love, truth, evidence, design, law, and freedom? Or is it the kingdom of fear, lies, proclamations, or claims, imposed law, and coercion? You look at the evidence and then you come to your own conclusion. There is character, you know, or motives. We're looking at operating from purity of heart. Now, in the book Heavenly Places 163, it says, if the thoughts are wrong, the feelings would be wrong. The thoughts and feelings combined make up the moral character. So in God's economy, we are talking here about having pure thoughts and feelings or motives. But in the kingdom of Satan, it's based on only behavior. Now, I could behave without having pure thoughts. I wouldn't go out and break the quarantine because I don't want to get caught and fined. But it doesn't mean that I really want to do that. Of course, how do we avoid being deceived? Because there's a lot of deception out there. Remember, we must understand the kingdom of God, the kingdom of Satan. Which kingdom do we see in operation in our world today? We need to focus on the method. What methods are they using? Now, if the data, the facts, the studies, the reports, um, the science is too confusing, then you need to focus on the method because a lot of things are stated a certain way to confuse the mind from being able to reason from cause to result. Godly methods are based on truth, love, and freedom. And truth loses nothing by close investigation and questioning. If you as an individual, an organization or whatever, if, if you have a problem with being questioned, then check to see which kingdom you are 
working with or for. If you, if we have truth and we believe truth, then we have nothing to fear from investigation and questioning because all the answers are going to be there. Ungodly methods are based on lies, exploitation, restriction of freedom. You see, they don't have truth. And so they must use censure and silence and deception and coercion. And they would shout down and incite fear and control. We need to understand the issues. Many people were focusing on the virus. The virus is, was not the issue. That was the opportunity to establish and to understand which kingdom is in operation. But for most people, they missed it because they were focusing on the physical. If you focus on the physical, then you miss a whole lot of things. God gave physical things as teaching tools. They are to teach a, deep, a, a bigger reality. So what is the basis of your belief? What do you believe? Do you investigate the evidence for yourself and come to your own conclusion? Or do you believe, believe based on popular opinion what most other people think? And do you conclude that it must be true because other people believe it, right people believe it? Do you accept what someone in the authority tells you because of who they are? Do you think that the government, the leaders and those agencies are trustworthy? Do they always tell the truth? And these are questions that we must ask and be able to find answers for. Do you trust your government more than your own ability to think or to reason and the evidence itself? What do you trust? We need to be able to reason. As a matter of fact, one of the qualities that God has given to man is the power to reason because if he gives evidence for the first six days, and then he calls man to consider the evidence, then he must give man the capacity to evaluate that evidence, to consider, to cogitate upon the evidence and come to a conclusion because reason is the ability to weigh evidence and come to a conclusion, to be able to think, to be able to meditate. Now, here is what God's word said. Every person must be fully persuaded in their own mind. Romans 14, five, every person. So in other words, to be able to be persuaded you must be able to think. How does God put it? He says, the mature are those who practice, by practice, have developed the ability to discern the right from the wrong. It's about methods. You see, one kingdom against another. The disease is simply the opportunity, the conduit. We present truth in love and leave others free. Which kingdom? So we think. So while many people are focusing on the virus and stressing out themselves, they fail to see which kingdom was at work and which kingdom they supported because many who believe in God were supporting the use of force because they were afraid. When you are afraid, you give up your own liberty. We must recognize the truth that everyone wants to be healthy. We must reject the lie that those who don't agree with our preferred methods of pursuing health want to get sick and die or want to get others sick and die. This is a lie designed to the, 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 the designed to divide. So we need to be able to distinguish truth from error. Most people are not reasoning, why? You see, there is what we call the, uh, a dumbing down that is, uh, we find it expressed in Ephesians chapter six. It says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities and powers. In individuals and systems, it says the rulers of the darkness of this world, spiritual wickedness in high places. So those sending such message are actually manipulating us with fear. And where fear is, there is not, God is not there. Now, fear impairs thinking and obstructs truth. Remember, God tells, tells us in uh, John 14 and verse 6, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the light. Uh, John also tells us that when he, the spirit of truth, is come, he will guide us into all truth. How do you think the enemy counteracts truth? By bringing in fear, because fear obstructs our way to see truth. It triggers the survival driving people. And what will people do in the survival? They are going to freeze, they're going to run, or they're going to fight. They're going to fight, including seeking to control others through law and force to make themselves feel safe. 
as people who believe in God, we need to recognize God's methods and we need to recognize the methods of, of, of Satan or we are going to bring Satan's methods in God's business. And that's the risk we run, to think that we are right when we are wrong and we will defend our wrong even to the use of force to control other people. And so when we look around, we have a high amount of regular flu cases all over uh, the world today. Um, but people are, you know, people are not fearful of even getting the flu sometimes or dying from the flu. People are not fearful. Um, we have a lot of anxiety and worry. What happens is that when you are uh, on in, in the fear mode, the HPA axis is stimulated, what we call sympathetic operation. What happens is that the hypothalamus is that tissue in the midbrain in the limbic system that is stimulated to produce um, corticotrophic releasing hormone. And that is going to stimulate the pituitary gland to produce adenocorticotrophic hormone and vasopressin, which is going to stimulate the adrenals, which is important in the fair response to produce adrenaline, epin, um, noradrenaline and cortisol. Adrenaline and the like, those are to, to help us to fight or to run. And cortisol is to prevent damage in case of injury when we are fighting or running. But the thing about it is that uh, high cortisol levels is going to stimulate a lot of inflammation. The thing also is that when we are in that HPA axis stimulation mode, we, 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 we have a lot of what we call vasoconstriction. Everything becomes constricted. Your digestion is going to shut off. Now, if you're not digesting well, could you have appropriate nutrients to be able to unify the body to respond to stress? And the answer is no. So whenever we respond in the fear, in, in, whenever we respond through fear, we are changed chemically and neurobiologically. Neurobiologically, our nerves uh, responses are going to change. Our dopamine levels, are, our dopamine set point is going to lower because you convert dopamine to form adrenaline. These are the things that many people do not understand that when we are fearful, we are changed. We reduce our capacity to hear the Holy Spirit when we operate in fear. And that is why God says there is no fear in love. Revelation chapter 21 tells us that the first set of people who would not see God is the fearful. He says the fearful and the unbelieving and the abominable. He didn't talk about the murderers yet or the fornicators yet or the liars, but the fearful because fearful people do not seek God. You have to give up fear to seek God because there is no fear in love. Fear and love are mutually exclusive. Love is based on truth. Fear is based on lies. So when we feel anxious or worry, we are anticipating all the bad things that could happen to avoid future risk. Worry causes the brain to constantly focus on potentially harmful scenarios instead of focusing on the goodness of God how he has made us with a wonderful immune system, how we can take better care of the immune system, how we can increase our faith in God, which without, we cannot be able to please God anyway. Um, when we fear, we increase our anxiety. You know, um, it is impossible to anticipate everything that will happen. So it is actually pointless to worry. Why worry when you can pray? Worry adversely affect our digestion. Whether it's worry about self or others, the physiology is the same. The stress created by worry inhibits the digestive secretion and intestinal motility. In other words, your digestive juices to break down the food. And you remember digestion parallels what? Comprehension or understanding. If you don't digest well physically, it's difficult to have good understanding. And that's what faith is. Motility, the movement of the, the, the material through the digestive system is important. It's one thing to eat food, but if it's not moving, there's stagnation. Stagnation will now equal fermentation. Fermentation is damaging to, 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 to the human physiology. Worry can cause indigestion, gas and bloating and constipation. So many people became more sick. You open yourself to more sickness when you are in the fear mode. So 
we need to always check stress levels in people. Now, how do we reduce fear? Because in other words, we must not always jump to conclusions. I remember chatting with one of our radio personalities in my country and I was sharing some of the things that are the result of the COVID pandemic. And he was so fascinated because most people don't think about these things. But remember, the people of God must be able to see issues clearly. We need to keep present in our observation of the situation. In other words, stop anticipating that which is, we already know that which is negative. We already know God has given us that we are going to have perilous times. Did we not know that? His word said that for over a thousand years. We already know that. Now, if we know that there's going to be perilous times, is it for us to worry when we see perilous times? In other words, uh, the second law of thermodynamics is, 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 is in, in place. What does it say? Now, the second law of thermodynamics tells us that everything is going towards maximum disorderliness. Things are going to become more chaotic. But knowing the law does not really give me the tools. It is to understand how to respond in light of my knowledge of the law, just like prophecy. God gave Nebuchadnezzar in Daniel chapter 2, the metal man. Uh, and many people can expatiate the different metals and the kingdoms. But how do I respond in light of my knowledge of these things? So if I know there's going to be a crisis, there's going to be quarantine and economic embargo, should I not be preparing by having good relationships, by um, get engaging in agriculture so I can eat, by living a simple life, um, by, by having good relationships with my neighbors and so on. These are the things that people need to think because when you wait until the crisis, you will see the height of selfishness in the people who you thought love God. So now we need to understand disease and what we can do personally about it. In the book Comstas on Health, page 506, it says, as religious intolerance threaten the liberty of our nation, those who stand for freedom of conscience will be brought into difficult places. They should, while they have opportunity, become intelligent in relation to disease, its cause, prevention, and cure. And here they will find work anyway and anytime. So we need to have knowledge, and that's why these platforms are established. So having knowledge about how to handle emergencies is important so we don't panic. If you're prepared, then panic goes. We need to have emergency supplies so that we can survive. And of course, we need to have our faith in God. Our relationship is very important. Know how to pray. You don't wait until the time comes. So let's talk a bit about the virus, what it is. Um, we're not going to spend much time on that because I know we have done that and seen that in many other presentations and um, most of the information folks will know. Now, the thing is, many people may not understand that unlike bacteria and fungi and other microorganisms, um, viruses do not consume nutrients. They have no life outside of another cell. So they're not living material, which uh, gives us the idea that where did they really come from? But once they get inside the cell, they are going to hijack the cell's genetic material, and then they are going to use that to multiply and cause disturbance in the cell. What does that mean? So you cannot kill a virus the same way that you kill bacteria and fungi because they are not operating on the same principle. So this is what many people don't understand. Um, but the results of the virus, because you, you may have um, weakening of the system, you are now prone to picking up other opportunistic organisms. So the, how, how exactly do these um, viruses replicate? Well, um, let's, let's just look at that for a minute because you see the viruses are really genetic information and what they do is that they infect other systems and they take over their function. Now, once they're in the living organisms, they are going to um, code, hijack the system, and then use that to replicate themselves. Now, viruses are sometimes called replicators. Why? Because they take resources from the living cell 
and then they replicate more of the virus until the cell dies. Now, if that process is not stopped by the body's immune system, then there is death of the host because the death of the cell. Um, we are made up of cells. And when cell dies, then uh, if enough cells are dying, then tissues start to die and so forth. So the transmission of the coronavirus is going to, as, as the science tells us, occurs because um, we, of nasal of droplets through the nasal mucosa and is actually heightened by exposure to the aerosols that in, in, the, in the space, especially if the space is closed. Now the virus is going to enter the cell by specific receptors on the cell. If you go back to here, specific receptors on the cell. And um, you have a very important enzyme, angiotensin converting to enzyme, very, very important. Now angiotensin II converting enzyme is mostly in the, lung, the lungs, the heart and the kidneys. So you would notice that people who have these issues tend to be the more susceptible and they will have the comorbidities, hence why most of them tended to die. Now, once inside the cell, the virus is going to unquote, unquote and the genome is going to be what we call transcribed. They will have um, new parts are going to be produced. The virus is going to multiply in the cell and make a new virion pod. Now, that is just generally how that happens. Now, we didn't talk about spike and all these kinds of things. We know that's not our objective to go into that this evening. Many people are concerned about the variants. Now the variant is going to operate on the same principle, is just like a different strain. And you have what we call virulence, how, 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 how the virus is able to attack a host, you know, the force or using a simple term, um, that is important. Then you have things like your infective dose, the quantity that is able to do um, whatever. So there are some viral diseases that we are aware of because we have been bombarded with viruses. The cold and influenza, chicken pox, pox mumps and measles, all these are um, viral diseases. Um, but when we talk about corona, we're talking about um, that family of viruses. They're very similar that, that cause a common cold. So it's not that we are not, have not been exposed to, but COVID-19 is a little different. So, um, from the information that was shared about, we're talking about the, the basic symptoms, the fever, the cough, the shortness of breath, difficulty breathing, persistent pain in the chest, um, of course, confusion and these things. Those symptoms we know about. And of course, the risk factors would be things like if you have uh, pre-existing conditions, respiratory conditions, uh, chronic disease, and so on. Um, we're talking here about worldwide distribution. That's why it's a pandemic. And some of the strategies that were used in an attempt to control the pandemic. And what you will recognize as you listen to the news with all the strategies that were put in place, it did not stop people from getting sick and or dying. So what were some of the reasons for the quarantine? Remember we saying, you must look at how the methods that are used and decide which kingdom. The truth is, if we are more willing to save our lives, then we will eventually lose it because we lose our freedom. And when you lose your freedom, what quality of life are you going to have? Now, the reason for the quarantine was that the virus is highly contagious. So we have to keep people apart. The more we kept people apart, what happened? The numbers kept going up. It has a high hospitalization rate. Death rate is higher than that for the normal flu. And of course, that is a cause for concern. But as, as I said, what is it that caused people to get sick or not? The quarantine, did it help? Now, how do we work with viral infections? Now, God has given us uh, food and food that has those principles in them to heal. To, to bring the healing virtue are the things that we must use. But today people are not eating good food, they are eating fast food, bad food, junk food. So food properly balanced, and this is uh, from Dr. Tilden, one of my favorite mentors. He says, food properly balanced 
given a preponderance of base or alkali elements, prevent fermentation. And ferment, since fermentation is the exciting cause of inflammation and the development of all diseases or affection, such food establishes immunization, what we call rational immunization. In other words, God designed to us with the laws of health and if followed, nutrition being one of them, we are going to have rational immunization. The body is going to build up defense against whatever may come against it. And that is natural, yeah? So we look at food, most people are eating food that has no fiber. So they are not building up their gut microflora. A lot of folks, junk food has no fiber. Processed food, these things are destroying our ability to develop a good immune system because life is a threat from everything in nature. We have lots of toxins and God designed food to be one of the things to build the immune system. We have the thymus that where we have the T cells, we have the um, tonsils and the adenoids. People are so, in, um, so sick, so much infection that they have to take out their tonsils. The spleen is going to filter blood and distribute the T and the B cells. The lymph gland is going to store um, white blood cells, you know, and even make um, in, increase the, the 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 proximity and the operation of the white blood cells. And the bone marrow makes the B cells. So if we don't eat food to build our system, how can we build a good immune system? Now, when we come into the world we have what we call the innate immune system. Remember we said that the virus comes in through droplets um, and it is able to pass the, the, the gatekeeper. Now, it is not that everybody will get sick because we have what we call constitution. Our constitution is like the soil in which we live, the biological terrain. It is our physical and emotional makeup. Now, if our constitution is weak, we are going to be more prone to be affected by microbes. So now, we have these gatekeepers, um, and what are these gatekeepers, like the skin, the tears, the air wax, the mucus that lines our respiratory system, or urine and stomach acid, they, uh, they are what we call the first line of defense. Those barriers that keep the invaders from getting into the body. Um, this is, we are born with the, this immune system, so it's called the innate immune system. But there are sometimes that some things are able to get around that barrier. And so God gave us some backup called the adaptive immune system. And the adaptive immune system, these are cells and stuff that are able to fight against infection. They are able to respond in specific ways to the invaders. And they include, as we said, the T cells and the B cells, the helper T cells, the natural killer cells, you have um, inter, interferons, uh, interleukins, many different components that come together. When the T cells now and the natural killer T cells do their work, then you have the suppressor T cells to call the, the dogs off and so on. It's a wonderful system. Truly, as David said in Psalm 13, and I will praise thee for I am fearfully and wonderfully made. Marvelous are thy works and that my soul knoweth right well. We are designed by God to face just about every eventuality. Now, antibiotics do not work against virus. Why? Because antibiotic is only effective against bacteria. So that is why you have things like most coughs and sinus problems and ear infections. They are viral in nature. So using antibiotics would not be effective against them. And there is no broad spectrum antiviral in medicinal herbalism, so you have to get specific, very, very specific. Antiviral drugs are sometimes used. Um, modern medicine has developed some antiviral drugs that can bind to specific viruses um, as they enter the cell and actually block them. Now, here the beautiful thing, when in the natural um, aspect of our immunity, Interference work to warn neighboring cells if a cell is infected by a virus. Isn't that awesome? So let us say a virus were to breach the innate immune system. In the adaptive immune system, one of the work of your interference is to warn neighboring cells, hey, 
a virus is in, my neighbor is infected. You guys are protecting yourself. But if you don't have enough vitamin C, if you don't have enough magnesium and zinc, then we are going to have a problem. Most drugs used to treat common viral infections are designed to relieve symptoms and they do not help the body get rid of the virus. So we need to give the body the energy to remove whatever may be causing the problems. Now, herbs and nutrients are much more effective because they are building the system. Um, and that's important. Now, vaccines are what is primarily used, but think about it. To develop good immunity, you need to put things into the mouth. When you take a vaccine, not that the vaccines may have no value, but the big thing about the vaccine is not necessarily about the vaccine. Remember, it's which kingdom? Is it the kingdom of liberty or the kingdom of coercion? If you didn't take the vaccine, you cannot travel. If you didn't take the vaccine, you cannot buy and sell. If you didn't take the vaccine, your goods and services are withheld. Which kingdom? This is how we need to think. So many people are worrying about the contents of the vaccine. As important as that is, if your liberties are being removed, what quality of life are you going to have? How are you going to represent your God? Are you going to now join with those who are forcing people and bring that into God's business and think that you are going to be filled with the Holy Spirit? Think about it. Yeah, think about it. So when we, when we do vaccines, vaccines go directly into the bloodstream. They bypass the natural mechanism that God designed for building immunity. And this is one of the things with it. It's not that they may have no value in no situation, because if you get a bad infection, you may need some modern medicine. But God has given us many things in the environment. When the crisis happened in Haiti and even around the world, you know, pharmaceuticals can run out. But we need to know the plants because plants are natural and they are also free. So people who have infections can benefit, whereas people who don't have money cannot always access modern healthcare. When you don't have any money and no resources, or even if you can't buy or sell, you don't have the criteria and you can use plants to get better. Now there are two theories about infection. You have the germ theory and the biological terrain theory. This is where many people uh, ha have conflict, but it's not conflicting. In the germ theory, we learned from Louis Pasteur that germs are a direct and immediate cause of illness. Now, when we do causal relationships in epidemiology, we learn that a factor is the cause of an outcome if the operation of that factor increases the frequency of the outcome. In other words, it puts the burden of cause on an agent that is external. So germs cause disease. When you go into your science book, you see this bacteria or this fungus or this virus, just like the coronavirus caused COVID-19. But think about it. If that was so, why did everybody not get corona? So now they have what we call necessary cause, sufficient cause, both necessary and sufficient, and neither necessary nor sufficient. So think about it. Look at everything that you would have experienced. Is the COVID virus necessary for the, to cause COVID-19? It may be necessary, but not sufficient. So it is what we call, it is a necessary, but not a sufficient cause. You must now have a compromised immune system. So what is the real issue? Is it the virus or a person's own immunity, their predilection? Now, in the germ theory, healthy tissue is attacked by germs and weakened. Is that really true? When God gave us a system to deal with that, killing the microbe will both prevent and cure disease. Well, we have lots of evidence that that is not so. You kill microbes and you still have disease. The type of germ, whether bacteria or virus, is important in deciding the therapy. So for bacteria, use antibiotic. For virus, use antiviral and so on. But with all of that information that people think, in, you see, if you, if you base your ideology on a premise that is not based in fact, then you are going to come up with a conclusion to support it. And you are going to claim any little results as success. 
in the biological Turian theory, because when you study the fact that we are made up of cells, our constitution, which is our physical and emotional makeup, uh, our cells live in a fluid medium that require oxygen, nutrients, waste removal, and regulated temperature to maintain homeostasis or balance. Now, anything that affects the biological terrain is going to affect the cell because we must get sick at the cell level for this thing to happen, except it's a physical trauma where we get there or maybe get a gunshot or something. So in the biological terrain theory, germs are a secondary effect of disease. In other words, germs are going to seek an environment that is conducive to their growth and development. Tissues become weakened, which allow the germs to invade. So that is why two people can be in the same room, the same house, exposed to the same virus, bacteria, whatever. One gets sick and the other does not. One has, the, both of them may look healthy, but we don't know what is happening at the cell level. Keeping tissues healthy will both prevent and cure disease, which is true. If you, that's why God gave us the laws of health. It is to keep health. In case of sickness, the cause must be ascertained. Uh, unhealthful conditions changed. Wrong habits corrected. What are the unhealthful conditions? Those are the surroundings that you live in. Wrong habits corrected. What are you doing? Are you drinking enough water, getting enough rest, and so on? And then nature is to be assisted. That's where you add the herbs and the lifestyle change. So if you strengthen the immune system, that will help the body to fight off infection, whatever the germ is. So it's to have a healthy immune system, not to keep fighting viruses. That's, that's a high cost. Now, the, in the innate immune system, how do we deal with the virus? Now, you have these macrophages in the mucous membrane. They are able to recognize viral material and eat them up. Macrophages, big eaters, they are going to start to eat up things. Now the membranes are going to flush the irritants and what is the flushing is like the coughing and the sneezing, the diarrhea, the body's trying to push out. Now, most people don't like these symptoms, so they want to get rid of them. If you are coughing and sneezing and those things, it's how the body is trying to push off. You remember, disease is an effort of nature to free the system of conditions that result from a violation of the laws of health. Now, in the, the adaptive immune system, you may have a fever because that's one of the things as you increase the temperature, microbes start to die. Now, if the virus makes its way past the innate immune system, then the adaptive immune system is going to produce the antibodies that attach themselves to the virus to deactivate it. The adaptive immune system can also, it can also um, recognize cells that are hosting viruses and destroy them because these viruses are very smart. They are designed by the enemy to destroy people. Now, if we want to prevent, because the issue is to prevent, standard practice would be washing your hands and keeping things clean, covering your mouth when you cough and so on. Those are standard practice, that's what the world does. However, you want to keep your immune system, especially your innate immune system healthy. And how do you do that? It is through good nutrition, and taking care of your gut health. Now, science is recognizing that gut health is determining a lot of things. How we think, how we feel, our mental stability, our ability to reason, gut health. The gut is called the second brain. So what is the enemy doing? He's corrupting the second brain and the second brain is instructing the, the, the first brain, the head through the vagus nerve. So if you damage the second brain, then the first brain is, would not be supported. Remember, your food must be processed in your first brain before it goes, in mean, your second brain, sorry, before it goes to the first brain. So many people have a corrupt second brain and the, therefore their first brain is not well developed, but they may be functioning in the economy, but they are not functional in the divine economy. So um, the, the mucous membranes, are going to fight against the infection. Like we said, they are going to try to mechanically trap the um, viruses and bacteria and so on. And so again, we're talking about things like coughing and sneezing and so on. They are the body trying to get rid of that which is irritating it. So we need to stay well hydrated. So besides taking care of the GI tract and having good nutrition, we need to be well hydrated. Now, 
um, one of the things that was very successful in dealing with coronavirus is fasting. And we're gonna talk about that a little bit. Um, probiotics are important. Um, that is going to help in the gut. So you need good bacteria. They actually secrete lactic acid and that inhibits the growth of a lot of harmful bacteria and fungi. Um, they also are actually, these um, good bacteria, they compete with harmful microorganisms and have to displace them. So eating healthy foods and keeping the gut microbe um, well is key in avoiding infection. That's important. Many people don't understand this, so they think they can eat how they want. Yep, we spoke about the, 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 the macrophages already, so we'll go that over again. Let's look at some natural remedies now. Now, things like your vitamin A, vitamin C, vitamin D. These are very important for development of the cell. As a matter of fact, vitamins are like grease to the metabolic engine of the body. If your engine have good working parts and there's no grease, as it starts to operate, it will heat up and then it will lock. So when you don't have enough vitamins, you don't have grease for the engine. A lot of vitamins are also antioxidants. A lot of, they might be able to mop up free radicals when we produce waste that can damage tissue through oxidative stress. Um, a lot, vitamins are also cofactors. A cofactor is that which helps your enzyme to function. All biological processes are enzyme mediated and enzymes need cofactors so that they can work. Things like your zinc, your selenium, trace minerals, Echinacea actually increase macrophage activities. It increases their macrophage ability to eat up uh, microbes. It also inhibits enzymes used by the bacteria to break down connective tissue. So God has put in the echinacea phytonutrients to be able to do that. Then you have things like your astragalus. Now, many people may know astragalus for improving sperm motility. But that's not the only thing it does because remember, in plants, there are many components that do many things. It's going to help resistance to viral infections, astragalus. And then, of course, for some people, um, this is information now. Remember, there are lots of things out there and we have to choose. There's also medicinal mushroom. Now, I'm not saying go and use mushroom. What I'm saying is that there are things out there. Um, sometimes you are in an emergency, medicinal and there are things that you have to know how to use. And even if you don't use them, you have to be able to guide folks as to why they are not being used. Then you have, let's say, we, we talked about your vitamin A and D because it is going to, vitamin A is going to strengthen the immune, the, sorry, the mucous membranes. It's going to make them resistant to infection, which is important. So vitamin A is not only for your eyes, it strengthens the mucous membranes and the mucous membranes are part of the innate immune system. That's the first line of defense. Vitamin D, especially D3, strengthens the immunity and makes a person less prone to viral infection. That's why when you have the flu, you go out in the sun um, and you, you feel a whole lot better. So what you need to do if you're taking um, your D, D3, you want to take about 4,000 I use in tablet form um, per day. Then you have your zinc and your selenium because low levels of zinc make you more susceptible to viral infection. So besides your reproductive system and your cognition, when you have low levels of zinc, you're more susceptible to viral infection. So this suggests that um, zinc can actually shorten the duration of the color of food, just like vitamin C. <clears throat> Vitamin C doesn't necessarily prevent the flu, but it shortens the duration, so you get over it faster. Zinc is also very important in DNA replication. So you keep your DNA strong when you have zinc. Selenium may also be helpful in inhibiting viral infection. Isn't that awesome? His divine power, 1 Peter, 2 Peter uh, 1, 3, has given unto us all things that pertain to life and godliness through the knowledge of him that call us to glory and virtue. Vitamin C, very important in combating viral infection. It is an antioxidant. And remember we talk about the interference. It aids the production of interference 
which the body uses to combat viral infection by warning neighboring cells. Yes? So um, high doses of vitamin C will help in the production of more interference. Um, you need high doses when you have a situation. So whereas you may be able to take 500 or 1,000 normally, when you have an infection, you could take up to 10,000. We need to support the body's eliminative channels. So if the body has a um, fever, then we shouldn't try to bring the fever down because we are, we are an energy producing furnace. You want to engage in some sweat therapy, use things to make you sweat. So things like your, your um, pungent herbs, we're gonna to come to some of those. Now, if the body is cleansing the, through what we call the respiratory system, you are coughing and sneezing, then you want to use expectorant and decongestant herbs. What is an expectorant is something that allows you to cough up the, the mucus and a decongestant is going to thin the mucus. Uh, you can also use steam inhalation with essential oils like a peppermint and so on. That is going to also decongest and happy to expect, express the mucus. Now, if the body is cleansing through the, direct, the digestive system, then you want to use an emetic that's going to help you to bring it up uh, through the mouth. Uh, charcoal and fiber is going to help you to push it down through the colon. And if the body is cleansing um, through the skin, then your drawing baths and your um, cold sheet treatment and your blood purifiers and so on, your bitter herbs, they are going to be important. So whatever the body's doing, we want to support the body. So um, Matthew Wood would have given this, he says, traditional medicine treat fever and other diseases by opening and closing the peripheral vents of the body. We're talking about the sweat pores, the glands and so on. It does not attempt to kill microorganisms directly. That's traditional medicine, what we call natural medicine. Instead, it dooms these critters by changing the environment in which they live, which is the best way. We must make the host unfriendly as opposed to try to kill the organism. The medical knowledge of the traditional healer is treated with disdain as if they had no capacity for dealing with acute viral or bacterial fevers before the advent of antibiotics. What was happening? We always had problems with, with microbes and they were successfully dealt with. So if you're using your sweat therapy, which is one of the ways that you could use, then um, that has been used in traditional healing for viral diseases. So you get a hot tub or your sauna or your sweat bath, and you use uh, herbs like your yarrow and your peppermint, your blue vervain, catnip and capsicum and ginger. Those are some herbs that you can use to encourage sweating. And then of course, um, you can use other things, you know, like your elderberry, um, your, and so on to get the immune system working. Use good hand sanitizers and so on. And then here is a, a recommended one from a, a, one of my favorite herbalists as well. You have olive leaf extract, one per day. You have the silver shield that you spray in your nostrils as a, a sanitizer. And then of course you can eat a boost the immune system with things like your ashwagandha. You can take olive leaf, two, two capsules um, four times a day, and that is going to help. The important thing to prevent fear is to be prepared. If you fail to prepare, then you prepare to fail. So there are some things to consider in a pandemic. Now, don't be over-reliant on things like your, your chemical responses. Um, what you want to do is take care of yourself. You need to be healthy. So if you are stressed, if you are eating a lot of junk food, then it's going to overwhelm the body. So it's good to have some first aid supplies, and so even if you don't get sick, then you need to have supplies, not just to help yourself, but to help other people as well. That's important because people will need help. Based on the area where you live, then it's good every year we get to practice and plan because we have um, disasters coming our way. And so you need to get your food kit, food seed kit with your bandages and your gauze and all the things that you need to have in your first aid kit get them because especially as a crisis comes along, 
you may have a problem or you may need to support those who have issues and you need to know what you are doing. Things like uh, scissors and knife and gloves and matches and flashlight, though these are very important as well. And then of course, the different remedies, there are many out there that you can choose from. The important thing is that we need to learn as well some local herbs. Many people call them bush, but God's herbs, it says God made plant for the service of man and they are important. We need to learn some basic ones like your elderberry and elderflower, very helpful for viral infections like the colon, the flu. It, they are also helpful for fever when you have sinusitis, in, the inflammation of the sinuses, um, viral bronchitis, coughs and congestions, even for inhibiting the herpes simplex virus. So uh, this these, these elder, elderberry and, and the flower, very important. They inhibit viral infection uh, reproduction in the cell. Yeah. And they're able to shorten the duration of the cold. So we need to know how to use these. Yeah. So some might be congestant. Things like your yarrow. Yarrow is one of the, is going to stimulate sweating, the removal, you know, for you to sweat to push out the infection. Um, it is very helpful for acute viral infections where there is a fever present. Um, it combines very well with elderflower, peppermint. If you put them together and you do a bath, you do a steam or so on. It's using sweat therapy, right? Um, you have lumetum, very important in viral infections, a wide variety of them. Um, white cedar is another very uh, helpful one. Um, it is used for immune stimulation and it's an antiviral agent for things like your bronchitis, your influenza, and your pneumonia. It's a respiratory decongestant. You remember decongestant is going to thin mucus. It's also an expectorant, help you to expel the mucus for colds and coughs and respiratory issues. It's a component in Vicks Vapor Rub. And you know, if you grow up in, the, in many areas, you know about what Vicks, the power of Vicks Vapor Rub. Um, you use small doses internally, and mainly for steam inhalation. And then of course you need to stay calm. Stay calm because worry and, and, and faith don't go together. When you have faith, you know, Daniel was not afraid to go into the lion's den. He said, you know, if God decides to save me, he saves me, but I'm going to live right. The three Hebrew nobles, Hananiah, Mishael, and Azariah were not afraid to go in the fire furnace. They were prepared to live right. You see in Romans chapter one, it says, the just shall live by faith. The just, those who are made right, whose minds have been made right, they live by the principle of truth, not by fear. They live by the principle of love, not by selfishness. They live by the principle of freedom and liberty, not by force and coercion. Those who are made right, they are justified. They will live by doing what is right in governance of self and leave the results up to God. So they said, God, we know our God can save us, but that's not our concern. We would not serve your God. So when I, where Adam and Eve fell, they stood. And that's the issue in the book of Daniel. It is teaching us that we can stand where Adam and, as a matter of fact, Adam and Eve were deceived. This these guys were faced, they, the consequences were before them. There was no butter up. There was no butter up. They knew, and yet still, in the face of that, they say, you know what? We'd rather choose to live for God. What did God do? Because their hearts were made right, then God was with them, and God promised to be with us as well. We need to be able to stay calm. You know, we need to be able to stay warm. We need to be able to stay hydrated. We need to be able to stay well. God wants us to be well. He says, beloved, I wish above all things and that thou would prosper and be in health, even as thy soul prospers. Fear is a powerful tool of social control. Most people willingly turn over their liberty to others who promise to save them. We must not panic. Use fear to take, you know, thoughtful, conscious action. Don't panic. It's a difficult situation. 
it can be a fearful situation, but we don't have to fear. Don't listen to rumors, research and get the facts. We need to be sober, be vigilant. We need to put things into perspective, the right perspective, because we are the light of the world. We must show the world how to live in crisis, in challenge. But if we fear just as the world, then how can we help them? They would not come to us because we have nothing to offer. And so the crisis of the last two years should have taught us that we need to put things into perspective. When they said, don't go to worship, we didn't go to worship either. Thank God for the platforms. And now we have the impact. So one of the beautiful things is that we have the platforms continuing. But there are some things, people want things to go back to normal. Why would we want to go back, things to go back to normal? I say we should be moving higher. We should be moving faster because the end of all things is at hand. May God continue to impress upon our minds our need so that we can be the kind of people God wants us to be, clear-minded, sober, vigilant, because our adversary, the devil, like a roaring lion, is seeking whom he may devour. We need to resist him firm in our faith. Faith is understanding, and we can't understand unless you have a clear mind. We can't have a clear mind unless we have a healthy body. It takes healthy people to be happy people. God wants to save us healthy and happy. So may he transform our minds and cause us to walk in righteousness so that the light of the love of God can shine in the world in this time of darkness. God bless you. In Jesus' name, amen. Back to our host. Yes, and Sister Mikael. <clears throat> okay, Sister Mikael is asking if you can open her mic. I guess she doesn't have um, privilege to open. Yes, Sister Michael, your mic is open now. Go ahead. Yes. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Brother Bob, this is a timely message. And we want to thank you with all, all, all our hearts. Indeed, you have been a jewel to us before, and now you are one. May the Lord bless you and keep you in doing the good work. In fact, you are training us to finish the work. <laughs> yeah. And That's I can it. only praise the Lord, Bob, Brother Bob. I want to tell you personally that I love you. <laughs> oh, I do, I, I do. I, do. <laughs> I love you guys too, yeah. Thank you. Now, uh, I will be the one handling the questions. And Brother Bob is going to give the answer. So, Brother Bob, would you like to start with what? The hands. Let's hands. Do the hands. The hands. Sure. Okay. So, mm -hmm. please put your hands, your virtual mm -hmm. hands up so that we can see, we can hear the questions. We will be waiting for you. Let's see. I am scanning to see. I don't see any virtual hands as yet. I saw um, Stephen, Isaac, and Lisa Francis had their hands up. I don't know. Okay. If so we'll start with the ladies. Lisa, then... Yeah, and then Joan, and then Stephen. Yes, thank you, Brother Bob. Yes, good evening. All right. Good um, evening. For, yes, how do I advise a, a pregnant mother who is uh, 
I remember you seeing it on a different platform where um, pregnancy in pregnancy, there's a cleansing, cleansing process going on where that will cause the nausea and vomiting and all of that for the first phase. But where she's not able to take the food in in order to build the immune system, how do I um, advise or um, assist in getting over that first phase in order for her to build that immune system and to get back on track and to eat in that healthy foods? Well, there are um, two things that normally are recommended. You have vitamin B6 and ginger are very helpful in calming that what we call digestive fire. Yeah, so if you, vitamin B6 and ginger, use ginger as a tea or she can even chew it, it's going to calm that down in the first uh, trimester. Those are very helpful. Also, you have things like um, fennel. Elisa, uh, is that good enough for you to, for tonight? Um, also, things like what? I didn't get that. Things like? Fennel. 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 Oh. Yeah. OK. All right. OK. I love it. So, I like rice. OK. Thank you, Lisa Francis, for your question. Now, we are going to the next person. It was the gentleman, then Joan. Okay. Uh, yeah, he's, he, I think his mic is open now. Yes, I'm seeing it open. Yes, uh, good evening, everyone. Good evening, Doc. Good evening. How are you doing, my brother? <laughs> my dad was so happy seeing you this evening. You went really, really, really deep. And I, I love the way you went into that food thing. And uh, it reminded me of a graduation we had just on last Thursday, uh, my diabetes graduation. And interestingly enough, we were teaching the diabetes classes, but right after the classes, the folks were pretty much getting into some meals, providing to the people that was uh, not consistent with what we would call food. Because we know that, um, we, we know that, Food actually, and you mentioned the Psalm 139, 14, where food actually provides your body with nourishment, which helps to build your immune system to take care of um, the problems that you would have out there. Junk is edible, there's edible junk, but it doesn't mm -hmm. nourish your body, it actually destroys your body. That's right. So because of the situation that existed, what I came up with was to use the idea of the traffic lights. And using the idea of the traffic lights with the green lights, also using like a rhyme. Green means no, yellow means um, slow, and red means no. Actually using my hand to, to highlight mm -hmm. that one. The folks were able to understand basically what is happening. I went on to indicate that the green light foods, gave a list of the green light foods, and that the green light foods, what they, uh, they provide for your body. When you get into the area, of the yellow light foods, we're talking about refined and processed foods. Yeah. And it's even worse when you get into the red light foods because, I mean, they're highly processed and highly refined. That yeah. thing took off so much that at the end of the graduation, when they brought the food, some folks decided they don't want to use those foods because they're not representing. And they started off, they asked me now to lead out, green means go, yellow means slow, and red means no. So they were using that as their theme. And you yes. know what? The lady who is in charge of the program requested that a new class be started this Thursday. That class was just finished and we tried to get a break, but they decided that. So there are methods out there that can be used and we just need to understand how to get these across so that people could fall in line and use the foods that are gonna build your immune system to help your body provide your cells, provide the nutrition and the oxygen that it needs to provide. Thank you so much, Doc. Yeah. Always yeah. appreciate you. Wonderful, wonderful. Thank you so very much, uh, Stephen, for your comment. Now we are going to take the hand of Joan Cotterell. Joan, is your time. Thank you so much. 
And good evening again, Dr. Bob. Good evening. How are you doing, my sister? Delight to hear you and to be on this program. What a blessing you are as you share your professional expertise. And I must say before I start my question is that it is so wonderful that you incorporated with the word of God, the spirit. And Psalms 139 is one of my favorite songs. I memorize it to that key. From the beginning, end, I can say it. Yeah, I did it myself. I, I love it. I love it, you know. You know, Wonderful. the part that I love very much is, um, I love the line, how precious are thy thoughts towards me, O Lord. How great is the sum of them. If I were to count them, they are more in number than the sand. The when sand. I'm awake, I'm still with thee. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Well, I just have um, two questions. One is um, about the the medical mushroom. It's because um, first, is mushroom good to eat? Because I know there are so the many different. Mushroom varieties. is actually a fungus. Eh? Mushroom is actually a fungus. No. So you uh, wouldn't recommend they, us eating mushroom unless. No. So we don't recommend the eating of mushroom because it is a fungus. Okay. Now, when we talk about medicinal mushroom, just like there. Um, we don't subscribe to the use of um, vinegar internally, but okay. you can use it externally. Um, one of the best things to clean a diabetic wound is vinegar. All right? Mm -hmm. So when we do education, we educate people, and it's what we don't expect you to take the exception and make it the norm, <laughs> you know? So it's mm -hmm. education. We, yes, there are medicinal mushrooms out there, um, and a lot of them is used for fighting against viral infection, especially, you know, they say cancer is a virus. So some of the things that's used against um, cancer are the medicinal mushroom. Um, so we're saying we don't take that exception and now make it the rule, but we just let people know these are some of the things that are out there. Okay, thank you so much for that. And also for the... Um... I have a picture over here. Also for the um the boost boost, I'm sorry, the um the immune system. You on your slide you talk about the um zinc and selenium. Now yes. are, are they supposed to be used together or separately? The zinc and I mean I don't know how, how, how are they manufactured, zinc and selenium. There are formulations that will have them together, but you can use them separately. If you're doing selenium, then you might want to do 50 to 100 um, mg's. Zinc, you can do uh, 10 to 20 mg's, and those are good for maintenance. Now, the, uh, the selenium would come like in capsule. Zinc comes in capsule or in um, liquid form. So usually when I use a lot of supplements, I, I try to select the best, and so I try to select the liquid ones because that is going to go to the cells much faster. So the key is to look around. Um, as you become educated, you, you know how to look around and to find them because we can't recommend the brand on the platform. All right, so you look around and you will find good brands, but that's a good guide with your zinc. There are formulations that will come together. Um, even there may be multi-mineral supplements. Now, many people are familiar with multivitamins, but multiminerals are out there and multiminerals are very powerful because most people are deficient in minerals. One of the ways you become deficient in minerals is by having weak stomach acid. You need good stomach acid to chelate your food to get your minerals. You also need good stomach acid to chelate your proteins to make your amino acids because all your neurotransmitters your enzymes and your amine hormones are made from, guess what? Amino acids. Your mm. DNA is made from yeah. amino acid. So if your stomach acid is weak, you don't make good um, enzymes, you don't make good amine hormones, you don't make good neurotransmitters, you compromise your immune system. The enemy knows that. That's why he causes people to have like junk food and false food and bad food. And those things are critical. Okay, thank you so much. For that answer. You're welcome. Thank you. Okay, now, thank you, Joanne Gauterel. May the Lord bless you. Um, we are going to take Kevin and Rita Fuller. 
Greetings, <laughs> greetings, everybody. How's everybody doing tonight? Greetings, we're good. Great, God is awesome. You're very, very, very awesome. I, for the first time, I have to say, I am listening to you, so we have not yet met. I, however, I do have a question for you. Um, we have an awesome memory, uh, awesome ministry, I should say, on um, country living and, and bringing people to the country. There are a lot of people new to SDA and a lot of people coming in with various health conditions. What would you recommend um, as, I, I, I'll even say your top 10 vegetables or top 10 vitamins that they can take to try to rapidly bring their body into the norm, if I, if I, if I could say that. But to try to, because they're switching to, plant, they're becoming plant-based now, they're recognizing that just about everything in the store is, 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 is toxic. If you don't grow it, basically, you don't eat it. So um, we, we want to give them advice on what is it, the top 10 things or the rapid things that they can do to try to bring their body into the norm. Well, the first thing is to recognize the three dimensions of the human. Uh, number one, if you don't recognize that we are three dimensional beings, we are physical, we are mental, we are spiritual. You know, First Thessalonians 5 tells us, he says, may the God of peace sanctify you wholly holy, the God of peace, and I pray that your mind and body and spirit be preserved. Yeah, many people, their problems are not in the body at all. It's really in the mind. So we talk about fear tonight. Lots of people are fearful. And if you're fearful, you don't digest well. You don't assimilate well. It doesn't matter how much you eat. So number one is to understand that uh, your thoughts and your feelings must be brought into alignment with your God. Have, have a relationship with God. Now, if you really want to uh, jumpstart your system. A fast is very important. A fast, take away food. We eat too much. And there is what we call dry fasting and water fasting. If you go on a three-day juice fast, using only one juice at a time, especially if it's a green juice. So let us say you start with green apples, 12 to 16 ounces for breakfast. When you are hungry the next two or three hours, you do carrot juice, 12 to 16 ounces. Uh, after in the afternoon, you do another juice, uh, maybe some kale juice or maybe some other green juice, maybe add a little ginger to it. What you'll find you do that for three days is going to now give the digestive system rest and conditioning where you are able to absorb nutrients without the need for insulin. Because insulin is one of the things that is damaging us by using so much processed foods. After that, now you go on a mild food diet using lots of vegetables, especially your cruciferous vegetables. They have a lot of fiber. They have indole 3 carbonyl alpha lipoic acid. These are very important components for cleansing. Stay away from uh, wheat. Stay away from white potatoes. Stay away from pasta and all these things and, and animal products. Stay away from sweet fruits because many people, when they start to go healthy, they go on a lot of fruits. You can do the berries. They are very helpful, but you want to stay away from things like your bananas. And um, uh, if your oranges are too sweet as well, you don't do sweet, sweet fruits. Those are going to help you. Then you always add your nuts and your seeds because you need your fat to be able to help your brain to function, your digestive system to function, your immune system to function. So what you do is you get a sheet of paper and you make six columns. You label it fruit, um, vegetables, nuts, seeds, peas, beans. And you are going to now fill in the columns. You are going to use the fruits that are more starchy and less sugary. So you can have things like your uh, chocho, you can have things like your eggplant, if people can tolerate it, your okras, um, pumpkin. Those are fruits because they're, they're just starchy fruits that you have to steam a little bit. Um, you can have your fruits that are not high in sugar, your vegetables. Again, you have a lot of them above the ground, below the ground. And you will recognize that you can list at least 10 fruits. You can list at least 10 vegetables, that's 20 things. You can list at least five nuts, that's 25. You can list at least five seeds, that's 30. You can list at least five um, peas, that's 35. At least five beans, that's 40. That's at least 40 things that you have natural because what people say, what am I going to eat? Well, I say, when you start to make that visual, you have power in your hands to be able to shop, to be able to cook and to be able to be healthy. 
Wow, I thank you. That's beyond amazing. That's beyond amazing. God gave us a feeding ministry. So here in Wisconsin, we have um, 70 acres that we do plant on and we feed people. We adopted food agencies and different organizations. This year coming up in 2024, um, we plan to stretch that out and take this food across the state. So kind of trying to get an idea on what my top 10 items would be to grow to help nourish our people as we bring them into the ministry, because we don't want to ignore um, the community. We want, we want them to be healthy. We want them to know that God loves them and he wants to feed them and nourish them. And and, and not just with words, but with food as well. Um, so yeah. my, my, my interest was what can we grow that you recommend yeah. that we grow? That can feed and people. you guys, you guys in Wisconsin have a powerful tool. Now, in my early days of ministry, there was the natural ovens program that was started in Wisconsin, where in two schools they removed processed foods, and they had reduction in uh, violence, um, they had reduction in pregnancies, in suicides, increase in behavior and academic performance. The natural ovens program was done in New, in in, New, in uh, Wisconsin. And the government wanted to adopt that mm -hmm. program. I don't know why they didn't. So if you do the research, natural ovens, that was a Wisconsin program developed by the state over 20 years ago that should have been adopted in Congress, but never was. I think it's because, we, well, we know why. They, they, they don't, the devil just wants his duty, he wants his power. Yeah. So thank you so very much. That's been super helpful. And, and we will definitely be talking in the future. Thank you. All right, Kevin. Let me say a special welcome to Kevin and Rita. Thank you so much for joining us. It's a pleasure to have you on tonight. And it's good when we can come together as sister ministries and serve God's people. So thank you so much. And we look forward to seeing you sharing with us one Tuesday night. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you guys so much. You guys are awesome. I'm 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 literally just kind of blown out of my socks with um with the doctor and, and hearing you all speak for the first time. Um, we're two years new to SDA. Um, and real quick, just coming up as, as young people, we would always go to church on Sunday and we saw a seven-day Adventist church and they were never open. <laughs> and I laugh about that. But God, when God gave us a ministry, um, he clearly he he, he defined it for us in such such detail. Um, that he told us, he said, it cannot be like the other ministries. And I explained that to my wife uh, because of, of both of us coming from different areas and she was so sanctified. So I slowly started to take her by the churches and show them where the churches, um, where there's such a great apostasy. And 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 we found SDA through um, YouTube, believe it or not. And then, But God gave me a ministry when I was in the shower. And 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 then I, and then I went back to take another shower. That make me now I take showers all the time. <laughs> I jumped in and I jumped right back out when he gave me the name of the ministry. It was there are people, and what it meant is there are people that's in need. There are people that's tired of being lied to and deceived by churches. Um. So as we as we joined the SDA and learned and we grew rapidly and God just blessed us beyond belief. And, and we started eating different. We started feeling better. We started helping people. And then the blessings again just started pouring in and we just took off and God is just so awesome. So we can't wait to share the story. Amen. Amen. And so we'll be having you. So I'll be talking with you and we'll be scheduling you for some time soon. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Absolutely. God bless you all. Thank you so much. Thank you so much again for joining us. Have a good night. Okay. Over back to you, Sister Mikael. Thank you, Sister Angela. Thank you, Brother... Kevin and Sister Rita. Uh, it is actually 2104, which is 904 p.m. And um, there is a last hand that we are going to take. And this is the hand of Sister Cedia Johnson. Could you go ahead, Sister Cedia, please? Okay, thank you. Good night, everyone. Um, I don't know if this is a topic that you have already explored, but I did not um, get it. Could you look at Alzheimer's, how to take care of the brain and all of those things? Um, I have some difficulty remembering. My dad has had Alzheimer's and my grandmother and my mother's side had it. so. I'm kind of like going mm. up in age. I'm seeing some signs oh, like so I yeah, just can't yeah, remember yeah, some things. <laughs> okay. And I, I I'm so worried about it. 
Yes. Well, Kedia, you're too thing. young for that. Brother Bob, this yeah. is a young girl we're talking about here. <laughs> yes, Sister Angela, but I am I mean I I did I did one time I went to the doctor and I did um he had a machine that he said stand your body and he told me that my brain power was weak. Right. So so and and I could understand your fear because you're seeing now, one of the reasons that a lot of things run in family is because we live the same way. Now, the way your mother prepared her meals is more than likely the same way her mother prepared it, and it's more than likely the same way you prepare it, mm -hmm. the way we shop, the way we think. So it has to do with our orientation. We have to learn new ways of thinking. Um, very helpful. Now, uh, Alzheimer's is actually called diabetes type 3. And you have to go back to what causes diabetes. Um, as people of African descent, we are using too much carbohydrate. When we use a lot of carbohydrate, we create high insulin demand. That insulin is damaging our blood vessels, those supplying the brain and the extremities. We need to reduce the insulin demand by reducing the carb load, especially the refined carbs. The next thing is that for cognitive development and continuity, we need B vitamins, especially B3, B9, B1. These are very powerful. Now, because we use high carb, high carb sugar, we leach our B vitamins. We don't get them because the body has to use them to usher toxins out. So you see why it's important now. If you go on a plant-based focus on more vegetables, especially the green ones and your nuts and your seeds, and you rest, avoid worry, have faith in your God. He's able to do all things. He says, I am able to do exceeding abundantly and above. All that you can ask or think, even beyond. So you don't have to start losing your memory. The next thing is that it is possible you may have hormone imbalance. Because I will ask you a question, do you have a liquid fat around the belly? If you do, then that's Right. If you do, then you have insulin resistance. That's going to affect your estrogen. Your estrogen levels are going to cause you now to have memory issues. So if you have unbalanced hormone, those have to be balanced. Again, that has to do with carb load. So come off the carbs. Do a three-day fast, and you're going to see some big differences. But what I would advise is to get a good health assessment so that you can come up with a program of how to live. Yeah. So there okay. is hope. Yeah. Very comprehensive. I like. Yes, I do have imbalance hormone. I have PCOS. Wow, so I do have That's that. A carbohydrate thing. PCOS. The you know PCOS is. PCOS is actually a symptom of diabetes. You already have diabetes, but the modern system would not pick that up. PCOS is a symptom of diabetes. But the modern system would not, because, okay, when you have PCOS, what is one of the medication that they give to you? Not metformin? They, what is metformin? They, they used to give me metformin. Right. What is metformin? That is diabetes medication. <laughs> so you already have diabetes. So you can reverse that situation. Or next thing you are going to be clinically diagnosed with diabetes type two and then diabetes type three. So by virtue of your lifestyle, you're already a diabetic, just that the system doesn't classify you that, but your symptoms are already there. So, but don't be afraid, all, all is going to be well. <laughs> okay, so. Thank you. Thank you, you Sister Sidia. And don't forget, Keep the faith of Jesus and trust Amen. in the Lord. Uh, Brother Bob, I don't know if you will be able to take some of the questions that were written because the hour is advancing. What is so your choice, two. my brother? We'll take two of them. We'll take two. Okay. So let's go back. Please give me some time. Uh, I am checking. Why are you checking, um, 
Um, someone asked about the mushroom. It's not that I'm recommending the use of mushroom. As you say, it's just information we gave as to some things that are out there. So it's not that I'm saying go and get the mushroom and use it because we gave several alternatives. So always remember, don't take the exception and make it the rule. That's how you have to use information. It's like um, when we say you, you steam all vegetables or you don't mix fruit and vegetables. So now you have a condition where you need high levels of nutrients and you juice them. That's a different thing because you remove the cell wall. So you have to look at context. So do not take it and go and say that I said go and use medical mushroom. I did not say that. I said that we share information. That information is out there. But it doesn't mean that's the only thing that is effective. God has a lot of things that can be used. Thank you. Um, somebody is asking to explain what is carb or carbohydrate. Can you do oh, that? Oh. <laughs> All right. So a simple way to put it, um, uh, carbohydrates are a type of nutrient that is consisted of carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, mainly of your, your items that taste sweet. That's the, 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 the simplest I can put it. Like your wheat, your rice, your ground provision, your pasta, all these things are carbohydrates. Your fruit are mostly, the sweet is from carbohydrate or sugar. Yeah, we call it loosely sugar, but that's what carbohydrates are. Okay, good. Um, apparently after checking, this is the last question. So thank you, Brother Bob. You're welcome. May the Lord bless you and keep you. And Keep the faith of Jesus. Amen. Sister Angela, I'm sorry. Amen. Thank you so much again, Brother Bob. Always a pleasure. And one thing I do appreciate, you never say no. It could be last minute. You're just always willing and ready to share to the point where I feel guilty asking you because I don't want you to get burned out because I know you're doing a lot here on so many di different platforms, but you just never say no. So thank you so much. Tonight was a timely presentation because we're hearing talks about resurgent and what's coming back. And so we hope that tonight's presentation has been a blessing and that for each person on you'll take what you have learned and don't keep it to yourself don't get fat on the information don't become a diabetic on the information share it share it share it and even when you get the flyer please share the flyer as well and invite others to experience what you're getting here on a Tuesday night let's not just be like sponges and just soaking up and taking and taking let us give it is more blessed to give than to receive okay so thank you all so much and I know we have some new new time some first timers so after Brother Shard, Brother Shard, are you going to do the final prayer or Sister Mikael? Then we're going to open up and you guys can come on in and say your hellos and tell us where you joined us from. And we will part after that. Yes, I'm going to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, we just want to thank you for so much information that you have given to us. Please help us to internalize and to live out the information. May that tonight, as we go to sleep, that your mighty fiery angels that excel in strength be around all of us that have been participating tonight. Bless us, O oh Lord, and help us to be ready before you come. You have given us this little respite of time to be ready. Help us, O oh Lord. And we know that it is neither by might, neither by power, but by your spirit, says the Lord, that we are going to overcome every sin in our lives. 
Thank you for listening to our prayer. Thank you for giving Brother Bob your strength to continue the good work. I am praying, not because I'm worthy, but I'm praying in Jesus' name with many things. Amen. Amen. Sister Mikael, thank you so much as well for helping to lead out tonight. Thank you. Thank you as well to Brother Shaw, Brother Shard, and Brother Bob. Thank you as well. And to all of those guys who joined us on for the first time, it was a pleasure having you. And if it's your umpteenth time since we started this ministry, always a pleasure having you as well. So it's your turn now. You can unmute yourself. You can say hello to us if you so desire and tell us where you joined us from. Is it your first time tonight? Go ahead. But we hope that you're feeling welcome. And remember, we meet here every Tuesday night. Same Zoom information. Don't wait for a flyer or an invitation because we are meeting right here. Okay? So just remember that we do this every Tuesday night. When the time changes, we'll announce the new time change for the meeting, but the Zoom information will not change and the information presented here on a Tuesday night will not change. It will continue to be life-changing and life transformational. So anybody would like to unmute and say hello and tell us where you joined us from, it's your turn, go ahead. Hello. Brother Fitzgerald, how are you doing? Welcome, my brother. Hi, Sister Joan. Go ahead, uh, Joan. Okay, good evening. Thank you, Sister Angela. Thank you, Sister Mikhail L. And of course, a special thanks to Dr. Bob. I am Joan, and I'm calling in from Rochester, New York, upstate New York. Thank you. And we do this every Tuesday night. So please, don't wait. you don't need to wait for no flyer. Don't wait for no invitation. Just join us, okay? Thank you will do. It was wonderful. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Anybody else? Brother Stephen, how are you doing? All right. <laughs> I just saw your um, uh, trip on the screen and I was really, really excited. Uh, what time did you say you were supposed to go? To Dominica. Oh, trip. we're going tomorrow. Tomorrow. It's tomorrow. Yes. I, just today I got in uh, a bunch of clothes. I was given information about some quite a bunch of clothes. So I guess sometime in the future, if you would touch base with me, we might be able to help you with some of those. The guy offered me like about 40 bags today. I wasn't able to pick them up, but um, you know, we'll try to store some and uh, you might be able to get some if you have something again. Absolutely. We'll talk about something. that off air. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Thank you, Brother Stephen, as usual, for joining us. Anybody else want to say hello? Brother Fitz? It's good to see you on tonight. We need to hear that that voice, that bass, the baritone voice of yours greeting us. All right, all right. <laughs> I, I commit. <laughs> I was blessed. I was blessed. Great presentation, bro, Bob. Yes, brother Bob. Yes, I don't know. Maybe he's off. Sister Donnett, welcome, welcome, welcome. How are you doing? Hi there, Sister Angela. I'm doing fine, thanks. I am so sorry I missed the presentation, but I just wanted to say hi nonetheless. Thank you for joining us, my sister. Joan, I see your hand. Yes, yes. Sister from Cotorel. Yes, um, just a quick question, if I, if I am allowed. I just want to are, are you um, located in Jamaica, your, um, this uh, platform or this um and this that you are on, is this from Jamaica, is it? It depends on where I'm at. So right now I'm in Canada, and so it's out of Canada. When I'm in Jamaica, it's out of Jamaica. So the good thing with Zoom, it doesn't matter where in the world you are, we're able to go live. So praise God for that, for technology. But as it yeah, is right now, I'm in Canada. <laughs> I understand, but I'm just saying, it's saying something about, um, uh, uh, there, in the chat, there was an address and says in Jamaica, something is there. Oh, yes. So there's, we do have a ministry in Jamaica as well with a health food. It's more like a wellness, a natural remedies store where you can get your natural remedies and all of that. So that's in Jamaica. Okay. That's where I'm asking if it's okay. in Jamaica, but they yes. do go over to different um countries, different places. That's what. Okay. Yeah. Right. So the story is there in Jamaica. Thank you. You're welcome. 
Okay. So I put a question out there directly to you. I'm not sure if you saw it. Uh, I will. Okay. All right. Yes, I will. Okay. I'll just pass it on to them and they'll be on with us sometime this month. And I will. So Kevin and Rita, I'll get, I'm going to pass on an information to you from somebody who want to get in touch with you guys. So we're hoping that you'll be on as well with us in October. And so others can be blessed by your ministry. I was blessed. I <laughs> want to hear the testimony. It's a powerful one and how you're and the ministry you're now involved in and how others can be helped and be blessed, especially persons seeking to move to the country. So we want to hear that. And we hope that you'll be on Rachel. It's what now it's 1, 2 a.m. in the UK. Thank you for joining us, my sister. Are you in the UK or you're in Kenya? Where are you now? No, I'm in the UK. Actually, it's 21 minutes past, uh, past two. Oh, I'm really blessed tonight. I, I really cannot get off this program even if it's late, but I had to attend it when okay. I saw the topic. Thank you so much for everything. And thank you. We know it's after 2 a.m. and you're still up with us. Thank you as usual, my sister. Blessings. Amen. All right. Okay, anybody else want to say hello? Oh, Kevin, I see your hand. Anybody else want to say hello? It's your turn. If not, I'll take Kevin and then we're shutting it down tonight. So. I, I'm seeing some new names here, Dina, Edith, welcome, oh, Clive, hi, Clive, welcome, and some Jolanda, welcome, Jessin, welcome, Juanita, come be, I don't know that name, welcome, Layla is also a new person as well, Maudlin Gura, I think I've seen the name before, but Louise Martin, welcome, let me see any other name I've not seen before, Georgia Goldburn, that's a new one, Andy, welcome, and Garcia McIntosh, so, I just shout out the names of the new persons that I don't know and everybody else, you know, you guys keep this platform open, right? So thank you. Thank you. Thank you. JB money, the lady with the money guys. Thank you so much. Sister Ivy Faye. Oh, you're such a blessing to us in this ministry, sister Faye. And we do appreciate you. Thank you so much. Hey, Benjamin, I don't know who that is, but welcome. So if you didn't hear your name, you are the old timers. And we always, we're always happy to have you because you keep this platform open. I listen in Liverpool. Welcome, Anna Clark, sister Arlette, B. Guys, we're happy you joined us tonight. Do this again next week. Oh, in fact, next week, we're going to be looking at sickle cell anemia. And this is one that many persons struggle with. Sickle cell 